Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for Lexio on the Go. Our scripture readings are from Revelation 11, 19, and then chapter 12, 1 through 10. Um, just note there that 11, 19 flows right into 12, 1, and that's a real important link right there. Um, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 31, and then we're going to look at Proverbs 9, verse 1. These are the, uh, the two readings, Revelation and Luke, for the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. It's the apparition when um, Our Lady of Lourdes, uh, Our Lady appeared to St. Bernadette in Lourdes. And this took place in 1958, which was actually four years after the dogma, um, the infallible dogma was given in 1954. I'm sorry, 1854. So the apparition was 18. 58 and the dogma was 1854 the immaculate conception dogma the proverbs uh, 9 is taken from the office of readings for the same day um, so let's first look at revelation this is a, a key verse on many different accounts uh, but it's something that definitely should be put to memory revelation 12 and then you can back up and read the end of 11 um, but this really talks about Christ, it talks about Mary, it talks about Satan, and it, it lays the foundation really from Genesis on um, in a very symbolic way. So we have to kind of break down the symbols here. Uh, so uh, if you'll do the reading, I'll kind of break down the symbols. The temple of God that is seen in this vision, there's a, there's the temple of God that St. John the Evangelist sees. This is a, in Revelation as he's seeing this vision. And the temple of God here is meant to be the church. Uh, the church is the body of Christ, so the body of Christ and the church are one. And remember, we believe in the communion of saints. So in the body of Christ, there are those on earth, the church militant, those in purgatory, the church suffering, and those in heaven, the church triumphant. And so the temple is being built up, and this is the temple of, um, the temple of God, the church, the body of Christ. And then within this temple is seen the Ark of His Testament. And the Ark of His Testament, the new Ark of the Covenant, you know, the Ark of the Covenant, the Tabernacle in the Old Testament, the new Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of His Testament, is Mary. And we'll see how this connects to Proverbs in just a second. The woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, is Mary. The twelve stars uh, in her crown are the twelve apostles. We are an apostolic church. The apostles passed on their, Jesus passed on His authority to the apostles. And those apostles have passed on their authority to our modern day bishops. And that's what we call the apostolic succession in this apostolic church. Uh, the child is obviously Jesus Christ. It will be a child that will um, rule the nations. Um, there's a red dragon, which we call the devil. There are a third of the stars that the dragon sweeps down with his tail. And these are the fallen angels. Very important when we know that a third of the angels given sanctifying grace at their creation and called into the beatific vision they rejected that they revolted against that and that is a third of those angels which are now the fallen angels which we call demons um, the son is taken up this child the son of the woman is taken up which is a reference to jesus's resurrection and ascension and both uh, feast days of course in the church and in highlights of the liturgical year and then um, we also read in here that what will happen with these third of the, of the fallen angels, that they will be uh, sent out, cast out, and they will spend their time seducing humans and accusing humans. So all that the demons, what the demons and what Satan uh, as their leader want to do is simply uh, seduce us into temptation so that we will revolt, join in the revolt with them and then accuse us. So once we have fallen to their seduction, then continue to accuse us and really make us fall into despair. Despair is the sin against the Holy Spirit when we get to a point where we believe that we're so sinful that His grace cannot have an effect in our life or that we cannot be saved. In other words, I think John Vianney put it, I'm too sick to go to the doctor, or someone would say, I'm too sinful to go to God's grace. Um, then we, I want to move to Proverbs now. In Proverbs uh, 9 1, remember this is the Office of Readings, which is uh, found in Mottens um, for, for the readings for this day of Our Lady of Lords. It says, Wisdom hath built herself a house, she hath hewn her out of seven pillars. Wisdom hath built herself a house, she hath hewn her out seven, out seven pillars. So we always speak of wisdom as, as feminine, you know, Sophia. 
is, is what the Greek word is. And we know that Jesus is wisdom. So um, in, the, in the Old Testament, it's very common to, to say wisdom, and the Greeks also valued this wisdom. Well, we know that Jesus is wisdom incarnate. He is the word that has become flesh. And so when we speak here, we can put Jesus where we see wisdom. Jesus has built himself a house. He has hewn her out seven pillars. Um, so he has, Jesus will build himself a house. The very first house that Jesus builds for himself is the Blessed Virgin Mary. Remember that she, Jesus is true God and true man. So he gets to build the house that he will dwell in, uh, that he will uh, form, take form, take human humanity on. Uh, he is a divine person that will take on a human body, and he gets to build the house in which he will do that, which is the Blessed Virgin Mary. We believe that God, uh, Jesus Christ, who is God, builds this house immaculate. So this is an immaculate house, and this is why we have the dogma of the immaculate conception, that this house will be a house of gold, that this house will be a pure house, that this house will be free from the taint of original sin. And we believe all these things about the immaculate conception, and Mary is that immaculate conception. Uh, that was proclaimed as a dogma of the church. It was always believed, but then proclaimed solemnly as an infallible statement uh, by the Pope in, in 1854. He said that this is a singular grace given to Mary alone. And then four years later, Our Lady affirms this dogma in person when she appears to Our Lady, when she appears to St. Bernadette um, in France, um, in, in Lourdes, France. So that's kind of a nice connection there. When uh, St. Bernadette actually asks the woman's name, the woman replies, I am the Immaculate Conception. This was a phrase that Bernadette should not have known. Uh, she was not, uh, she was illiterate, I believe, at the time and, and was not familiar, wasn't even very good with her catechism classes. And so this would not have been a phrase that would have been in her normal vocabulary when she heard Our Lady saying, I am the Immaculate Conception. So. Jesus builds a, a house, uh, Mary is that house, and Mary will be the first house in which Jesus will, um, the first temple, so to speak, or tabernacle in which Jesus will dwell. Then where is he going to dwell after that? He will dwell in the church. And so Mary kind of prefigures the church, the temple of God. She will be the first dwelling place of Jesus, and then once Jesus um, is born, lives, dies, resurrects, and ascends, he will make his home in the church. Uh, this uh, technically happens in a lot of different ways. He is the body of Christ, which is the temple of God being built up. Um, again, the communion of saints. He is in every tabernacle um, geographically all over the world. So in every physical church, he is in every physical tabernacle, truly, really present. And then he also, by every Christian, by virtue of their baptism and confirmation, um, become a temple of the Holy Spirit. And so he finds his dwelling not just in every tabernacle, but he finds his dwelling in the soul of every single Christian. So we become like little mini temples. Um, like Mary, we become uh, Theotokos, God bearers, and we bring Christ to the world. So let's kind of go through that again. The first dwelling place of wisdom incarnate, the word incarnate, is the womb of Mary. That's first. Second, he um, obviously dwells on earth, um, but then will make his dwelling place in the church, um, the temple of God. Then that church will um, have members, and he makes his dwelling in each of those members. Um, that's the divine life dwelling inside of us. And then his church, his apostolic church, will bring his true presence, real presence in the Eucharist to every geographic area, and he will dwell in every tabernacle throughout the world. So this is a beautiful grace, and we see that Mary um, is, is honored and blessed to kind of start this whole thing off. Um, a great honor that is given to her. And it's then no surprise that the angel Gabriel would say, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Not only is she blessed among women, but she is blessed among all humans. She is kind of the hero of our race um, because Jesus Christ is truly dwelling physically, really, in her womb. And this will be, of course, a foreshadowing of what will happen to every Christian. So she is the first Christian. She is the first Theotokos, the God-bearer. She is the first tabernacle. Um, so she prefigures not only every Christian, every disciple to follow her, um, but she also prefigures every church to be built everywhere around the world in the sense that every church is like a dwelling place of Christ, is containing that womb and the fruit within that womb is Jesus Christ, who 
uh, needs to be at every place in the world. And this is a grace. This is, as the Pope said when he declared the dogma, a, a singular grace given to her. And the angel is, is declaring this hell full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And of course, we, we utter this every time we pray the Hail Mary. And that is also in Scripture in Luke's Gospel. Thank you for joining me for Lexio on the Go. Please take the time to visit linktoliturgy.com where you'll find fast, free, and faithful resources on the Gospel. Also check out linktoliturgy.teachable where you'll find our online school. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.